In part three of this overview, we are going to describe the service availability and readiness assessment use case. In particular, we will describe some of the differences between the SARA survey and the malaria use case. The SARA survey is a health facility assessment tool designed to assess and monitor the service availability and readiness of the health sector. The objective of the survey is to generate reliable and regular information on service delivery, such as availability of key human and infrastructure resources, the availability of basic equipment, basic amenities, essential medicines, and diagnostic capacities. It also generates information on the readiness of health facilities to provide basic healthcare interventions relating to family planning, child health services, basic and comprehensive emergency obstetric care, HIV, tuberculosis, malaria, and noncommunicable diseases. Let's describe an example of where this would be useful. Let's say Training Land wants to scale up its interventions related to safe motherhood and child health. They need to obtain some baseline data in order to identify priority needs at the facility level and decide which maternal and child health services should be scaled up. To assess this, they will use the Reproductive, Maternal, and Newborn Health subcomponent from the SARA survey. The data that are collected through the survey will provide a set of key tracer indicators related to service availability and readiness. Let's look at the data flow using the SARA survey. There are essentially two key parts data collection, and data use. An important question for understanding service availability and readiness is if the facility offers family planning services. Let's say in this use case, the facility does offer family planning services. Given they do offer these services, the questionnaire will ask specific questions about these family planning services. For example, the type of family planning services offered, the availability of family planning commodities on site, and the training offered for staff related to family planning. The data use aspect comes from the information collected on these topics. In the example questions shown, we can identify facilities that offer the correct or incorrect mix of services that have disruptions in the supply chain, and that have staff who need training. When comparing the SARA survey with the Malaria Case Management Survey, we can see they are quite different. The Malaria Program collects data on all suspected cases of malaria in every health facility in the country, while the SARA survey is conducted either annually or even more irregularly depending on the setting's resources. The survey data may even use a different device type, for example, an Android device, to collect the data. Despite frequencies in data collection or different devices used to collect the data, both of these use cases fit very well into the event model in DHIS2 and we will use them as examples throughout the course. This highlights the potential flexibility of having DHIS2 fit several needs based on the requirements and procedures that are outlined across various settings. Let's review the principles we have discussed in this presentation on use cases. When we talk about use cases in the context of DHIS2, we use them to define how we take field-level requests and incorporate the requested functionality into DHIS2. 
we often review a number of SOPs, data collection tools, data outputs, and program workflows in order to understand how the program works in practice. We can also use them to explain how programs have implemented DHIS2 in their own setting. This can be particularly useful for subject matter experts who may not be DHIS2 experts and will be an aspect of use cases that we will heavily focus on in this course. We also understand that they require collaboration to be most effective in practice. And lastly, use cases are often evolving and are routinely enhanced by new features and developments. Hopefully, this has given you a good overview of what a use case is in the context of DHIS2. If you have questions about this topic, please use the discussion forum to ask questions and other learners or facilitators can help.